Today I want to talk about how we can start to uh, improve our AO2 and our answers and I'm going to give you a pro forma that will get you to start thinking about what kind of things you would need to do to add AO2 into uh, an exam answer. Before I give you um, a pro forma on how you could tackle AO2, we need to know actually what it is. So um, where AO1 is demonstrating knowledge, AO2 is applying this knowledge. It's also where you get that knowledge and you are using it to analyze and evaluate um, an issue or kind of some information that you've been given. So it's not just about saying what you know, but it's how you can use the knowledge that you've gained. So before we actually look at what we need to do for an AO2 um, question, we need to realize that there are certain command words that will make us think, well, I need to apply AO2. Evaluate the phrase to what extent and discuss are all those command words that should trigger that thought process in your head. So the word evaluate um, is where we're looking at the strengths and weaknesses of an argument. So the argument could be that intervention is the best way with dealing with failed states. And you would have to look at the strengths of that argument and then you'd have to look at the weaknesses of that argument. Um, to what extent? It's a similar phrase. Um, it's again, it will give you some sort of statement like the one I just mentioned about um, intervention. And it's to, to what extent do you agree with that statement? The last word is discuss. Again, it's very similar to the other ones. You're having to look at both sides of an argument, usually from the side of being for or against it. And the reason why I've put these hands in the middle is because with all of these type of questions, I feel like you can use the kind of hand method. So when we come and talk about evaluate, you could say on one hand, there are these strengths that support this argument. On the other hand, there are these weaknesses that are going against this. You know, to what extent? On one hand, I do agree with this statement. On the other hand, I don't agree. With the discuss is the simplest of the thing. Um, on one hand, I am for this argument. I'm for this idea. And the other hand, I am against it. So this is a, a kind of visual technique to help you think about how you might structure your essay, but also what you need to do to answer the command word correctly. To help you start to think about what you might put for an AO2 answer, I've come up um, with this word pests. And here's a little picture of Sven the pest guy. He, hopefully he's a, a reminder if you forget the word. Think of that guy with his little um, kind of pest inspector kit on and it might help you to think about um, what you need to do for an AO2 answer. So we know that, um, that we always have to have some sort of clear point and evidence that will back that up. Um, it doesn't have to be that you add all of these other elements in, but if you're thinking about all of these elements in, then you probably will realise there's something that one of these factors I need to talk about if I really want to talk about strengths and weaknesses um, about an argument or a statement. So the first one to think about is think about scale. Um, if you're talking about an issue, is it an issue that only affects that local area? Can we talk about it on a national or a global scale? Think about where is that happening? Is it happening just in that area? Is it happening in multiple areas? So scale is a really good place to, to start with. Um, time is the next one. These are, these are ideas that geographers need to know well. So is it, again, something that um, is only happening now? Has it happened in the past? Will it happen in the future? In terms of time, if it's a project you're thinking about, does it have a limited um, uh, amount of success because it's only going to be around for the next 20 years or is it something that's more sustainable? That's again thinking about time. The other two words that you might want to consider are success and significance. So success, um, you might just want to think about say we were talking about something like rebranding, has it been a success? And what, what would make that a success? Well, who are the winners and who are the losers um, from a rebranding uh, process? Uh, if we're talking about um, a um, carbon emissions program uh, on a global scale, is that successful because everybody has done it or not everybody has done it? So thinking about the success and who wins and loses perhaps um, behind a certain argument or a geographical idea will help you with that. 
The last word, um, significance, um, it's not a word that you'll necessarily use for all of the answers, but it's something to think about in terms of if you're thinking about significance of different factors. Is one factor more important than the others? Um, if you're talking about a certain strategy, is one strategy more important, more significant than other strategies? So with this whole performer, this is just getting you to try and think about the kind of elements you need to talk about um, when you're talking about AO2. Here's an example of a question in which we know that we have to apply AO2. We know that because it's got the word evaluate. And what we would do, as we do with all questions, is break it down to make it a bit more manageable. So it's talking about military intervention. It's talking about, is that the most effective? And maintaining sovereignty. And the other word that we need to look at is failed state. So evaluation, again, is looking at strengths and weaknesses. So we're evaluating this statement. Is it the most effective or are there more effective ways of doing it. What I'd do is pause the video and see how you would try and apply that um, the thinking of pests to this question and, and see what you would come up with. So one way you could have approached this question um, is you could have just said, yes, my point is that I'm going to agree that military intervention is the most effective. You would then use some evidence. So you talk about the U UN MIS mission um, in South Sudan, where they put lots of troops on the ground and they were able to hold elections um, because of that, because there was safety in the country. But then you need to think about, well, I'm evaluating the statement. You know, how can I say maybe there are weaknesses in this argument? Um, in terms of scale and time and significance. So one thing you could ask in terms of scale is, well, does it happen in every country? Um, does military intervention always help out? And one example we could use is the fact is when the UN was in, intervened in Rwanda, it couldn't really stop the genocide that happened there. Um, what about time? So is this just simply a short-term kind of fix um, in terms of what happens when the UN leave? Will it just go back to the conditions that were there before? And so therefore, it isn't that effective if it, it's only maintaining it for a short amount of time. Um, and last enough, you could, again, building on that last point, you could say, well, where you have the UN there, not just as a military force, but as a kind of force that is there to build up democratic institutions um, and where we have free and fair elections, that is probably a, a better um, and more successful way of maintaining sovereignty over a longer period of time. So that is just one, one point um, which I have broken down into scale, time, success and significance. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that much detail for all of it, but just getting you to think about that and trying to apply some of those ideas will make the AO2 in your answers much better.